All right, so people have been wondering where my like Ohm Walsh's are. So instead of just telling them a million times, I decided to make this video. Hello, we're gonna walk around my house. You could use the timestamps to jump. And I'm gonna just describe all the permanent speaker setups. Not every bit of audio in every room, that would be absurd. But just the speaker setups and surround sound setups I've got currently going in the house as of July, 2022. So this is my office upstairs desk. Um, speakers are the iLoud MTMs, which are the self-powered monitors that come with the microphone for doing room correction. And I bought those and they were like 700 and now they're cheaper than that. And I'm simply running them off of a Motu M2 here, which is like my favorite uh, microphone pre because it has really good headphone out. And it has both uh, quarter inch XLRs, which are feeding those, and RCAs which are feeding that uh, SVS my, uh, 3000 micro. So you can see the RCAs run around the room and these are here. So if I put on, uh, hold on, if I start this and then do this and then do a house, New Orleans. They call the rising. That's Puddles, uh, what is it? Puddles Pity? Puddles Pity Party? Doing House of the Rising Sun. You know, these are, I forget, when people ask me, I have like a budget for a desk. I forget about the iLoud MTMs, even though they're literally the speakers I've chosen to put up on these uh, Ion Forge stands. And then just, they're perfect. But, Subwoofer. Subwoofer is sort of required to really get the low end going because these can do low end, but they, they, they top out at quite a low volume. So this is my office setup. One, two, three, four things, and we move on. Bedroom, master bedroom. This is where the sleeping happens. This is where the ohms have been living. Um, basically the problem is these ohms or the benefit is the ohms require reflections. Like this has to be in a corner because the speaker that's firing 360 degrees needs to hit a wall. It needs to hit a wall and it needs to hit a ceiling and then it all comes back at you. And I try to use them in the big area and it's just, it's just too big an area, but putting these in the basement is a problem because there are no walls. I mean, there are, but like to go into a corner of the basement would mean that one would have to be 50 feet away in the other corner of a basement. And then the ceilings are all stuff. We'll get down to the basement you know, later in this video and I'll show you the ceilings. But the point is, Ohm Walsh's are the opposite of a regular speaker. They need to be in a room in like a bad position. You don't want to put your tower speakers in a corner. These need to be there. On top of them, I have the Aperion Super Tweeters, which I have reviewed. And they're like a thousand dollar set of Super Tweeters that are front and rear firing and adjustable. And you just tap them into the speaker binding post with uh, spades and you amplify it. Currently got a testing thing going on with these Orchard, Orchard Audio Star Crimson amps, but the usual setup is a Perian Super Tweeter on top of Ohm Walsh powered by a Lox G A30, which sits here under the carp carton, carpet, car curtain, that's it, on all the time. And I used to uh, Bluetooth from my little uh, Alexa to that and that was it but then i'm like you know what i'm a i'm just gonna keep squeezing a little bit of quality out of this and then i picked this thing up which is the amazon link which essentially you tell your echo to hook to this it doesn't hook it up via bluetooth it just controls it and then this has a fiber optic output so i have a perfectly clean fiber optic signal so when i and when i am like um echo shuffle run the jewels Oh, it is doing it, but it's doing it there and now nothing's hooked up. I would have to play these like this if you wanted to hear them because everyone wants to hear them. The point is my Echo controls that box. My Echo controls that box, which sends a digital signal out to the LOX GA30. And then that powers both of these. And for $185, you cannot. Zeos is using it in his bedroom. I have a fucking infinite amount of amps and DACs I could use. And I'm using that. However, I am currently using this odd setup, which I will probably discuss in the video about the amplifiers. Uh, 
I don't know what song that is, but yeah. Here is where the Olmans have been living for the last, uh, since I moved in. It just makes the perfectest sense. Play. Ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. So, this is the sunroom. Called that because there's lots of windows and that's what the electrical panel says. When you move into a house, Whoever owned it previous gets to define the rooms and you just have to accept it. So in here is one of the first of the surround sound setups. I've got the uh, Forte 4s, which are quite a nice speaker all on their own. And you would think I would have these hooked up to some fancy tube amp or something, but no, nay, 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 nay. I've got them coming out these straight outputs of that Tascam PAR200, which is my I think it's nine years old now. Um, surround sound receiver with pre-outs, but the pre-outs are so noisy that any amplifier hooked up to these, they just, these are so efficient. And any amplifier hookup is usually a power amp and it's too powerful. So it's just noise. So just hooking these directly up to the task cam receiver, right as rain, dead silent. Um, and they're not hard to power, so it has plenty of power for that. Um, it's only a 4.1 in here. There's no center channel. I use the Fortes, they're still up on rollers because I need to roll them out of the way because this room was not designed for them to live in. There's too many doors. Here are the rear speakers. You might remember these from my old apartment, the Canto Benz. Um, these are a five and a quarter coaxial because there's a tweeter in the middle. And I figured it out when I reviewed them or when I was using them previous, how good this is. You just shove them in a corner and just like the ohms in the bedroom, these will hit the wall and hit the ceiling. Uh, for rear channels, that's great, because if someone's sitting here, that would be too close to point at them. You can get like an omnidirectional uh, or a, a dipole speaker and put it on the wall. It's still pointing at somebody. This points up, so the person hears a reflection, a reflection, and a reflection. And that happens on both sides, so you got a good, like, you sort of lose it. When I'm sitting, can you tell where I sit? I've made like a, like a little nest, like a bird. And you sit right here, and you enjoy, this is... Sc scanner darkly great movie sit here you get stereo imaging to the center you get your rear channels that are cranked and in the closet emotiva s12 sub which is right next to the computer that's running the 4k 120 hertz screen you kind of need a heavy computer to run 4k 120 but you know there is an emotiva 12 inch and all i got to do is leave this closet door ajar which I need to do so the computer doesn't explode anyway. And you get plenty of low end coming out of there and it's all, this is a very nice little place to be. Run into the kitchen, make popcorn, come in here, little baby surround sound, perfect. Uh, you all know this area pretty well. No permanent speaker set up here. I do occasionally have like um, the speaker stands and the fluid uh, FX80s hooked up if I'm testing out a preamp or something, uh, but nothing permanent here. The start of the permanent basement uh, surround sounds is the big one, which if you're not familiar with this one, there is a whole video describing it. You gotta go look up the review of this unit, the Mini DSP DD, hold on, I know, DDRC88D? I think it's the DDRC88D, which is hooked up to the UDI-08, that's also Mini DSP. So I got this little console, I think it's a 28 inch monitor, that uh, is cut to 235 to 1, just like the 150 inch projection screen. Um, this system only runs off of a computer. If you're like, I brought my game console, I can't help you with that. I'd have to get a capture card and do a whole thing. Uh, let's see if I can run through this in less than 90 seconds. So, micro computer here, I'll try to link it. It's a little Lenovo that's basically the guts of a laptop folded in half without the keyboard, battery, monitor or any of that shit, so it's very small. But you got a pretty decent computer, I think it's a Core i5. Hooked up USB to a UDI-08, which turns USB into four coaxial digital outputs, which means eight channels, which is 7.1 is eight channels. And then those eight channels of digital signal get hooked together in this massive bundle into the DDRC-88D, which you're seeing the console for that here. So if I go like this, you can see all the settings and the controls and I have the different configs for 5.1 or 7.1 or stereo. 
Can't play too much of a, how much of a movie, I can't, can't get away with music on YouTube, but how much of a movie can I play before I get like copyright striked? Um, so yeah, so we're going computer to the UDI-08, just to bring it out as digitals, and then the mini DSP DDRC-88D converts those digitals into whatever I want and shuffles them around and it gives me another four coax digital outputs, which again is eight channels. Uh, and then I have them running, coaxial digital cables run to, the rears are all swans. This is the back channels and it's hooked up with a fiber, a uh, coax digital digital cable. So there's no DAC involved. It's digital all the way to here and this, can, this speaker handles it all. Then I have not one, but two side channels. Now these are sharing the exact same input and I can't even change the delay because we're actually splitting the signal but it's uh, Swan M300s, and I made extensions to run the other ends over there. So these are getting a digital input and uh, you know, decoding everything and amplifying everything for side. And then the fronts are the world-renowned uh, Heresies, the Heresy 4s hooked up. There's a whole, ma I don't want to describe it because it goes, one audio channel goes there, one coaxial, and then it goes to another mini DSP that breaks it apart into stereo outputs for each of those DACs, which is for the horns versus the, the woofers. And there's a whole other amplifier there that's being broken down to for subwoofers. And there's the center channels are Swan M500s and that's theater. Don't do it like this if you're sane. So that's, that's this area is, is Swans and Klipsch. Oh, and the rhythmic subwoofer, which is tucked away on the other side of the wall right there because that's where the sub crawl for this area said to put it so now here in the what was my oh, i gotta pause that what was just the speaker test area i've had to turn into sort of like a little like here's my old couch for my apartment there's my old tv for my apartment there's the old fireplace for my apartment there's the old speaker stands for my apartment there's two windows like they were in my old apartment it's like my old apartment and i didn't actually have anything permanently set up here but only very, very recently, when I reviewed these Clips THX, which are perfect area for holding waifus, by the way, um, I sort of fell in love with just, A, these speakers, which I have moved to the center permanently in the back now, behind the TV frame. And uh, I actually contacted Periapt, and they're gonna start selling speaker cables soon. And they're like, oh, you need some custom speaker cables? Fine, because here's the stack of things that I'm currently using. I'll probably keep these here, because my main home theater is a fucking nightmare. And I would not want to be like, oh, I'm gonna test side channels. Where, how, how? But here, here. So what's gonna be a permanent setup and fixture in here is going to be the Klipsch, Right now, they're the THX 5000 LCRs. I'm gonna ask about the 6000 LCRs. So this is sort of like the least, uh, this is going to be permanent in some fashion, I'm just not sure how it's gonna end up. But I've got three of the 5000 LCRs tucked away in the corners. They don't bother me in this space here where I do my listening testing. This rack stuff has to get moved. In fact, I should contact the Motiva for the rack mount ears to put it in here. But I've just basically got my MC700, and my uh, base X A3, because it's just three channels for the front. I've got this little Optiplex computer that IT man handed me, and uh, do two display port outs, no HDMI's, it's strange. I had to use adapters on both. And I'm running one HDMI all the way to the television, one HDMI to the surround sound unit, which will be here. I've also got this Behringer A800 on there for the rear channels. So one, two, three speakers. If you watch my review of this, you know the subwoofer. Back here is a Dynamo 400, which is amazing. I would like to try a larger sub in this space, which means I have to contact companies and be like, hey, you want me to test a larger sub in this space? So one, two, three speakers, sub. Uh, the Currently the rears are my DIY 3.1 Swans. I have this obsession of putting Swans as rear channels apparently, but they were sitting on the shelf and they're slightly too bright for me to use every day. I have this foam over the tweeter still, in fact. And they're on these custom heavy gauge, what are these, 12 gauge flat cables I built going to the Behringer amp. And that is my f actual 5.1. It was a 6.1. I was using this fluid audio singularly as a back channel, but it, it's sort of in the middle of my VR space. This is my VR area when it's not covered in wires. 
um, put, nice carpet I put down. And I was actually doing an interesting thing where I was converting the analog output of that to digital with an ADC that I bought, it was real cheap. And then converting it back to analog with this little Fio D3. So I only had to have this long of an ana analog run to run the speaker. And it worked. I was thinking about making like a YouTube short on it or something, but that was plenty. But I'll probably just get rid of that, ditch that, and just keep just these side uh, speakers instead of making it a 6.1, making it just a 5.1. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's basically Mother French. That's basically uh, the three surround sounds and then my desk setup with the iLouds and then my bedroom setup with the ohms and that's all the permanence we have. And I kind of wish I had more rooms. Like the guest bedroom doesn't have anything except the guest bathroom has a, as an Amazon studio or the Echo studio. Same with my master bathroom. There's no speakers in there. If you saw my TikTok of my 570s, I took them out of the bathroom. It just, it was time. But yeah, no, I have enough speakers to put a speaker set in every crevice and crack, but really the only permanent ones are the ones in this video. I'm hoping those clipses stay here permanently. And if it's just, uh, it's time to review these Aperion, you know, v, V6T towers, slide them out, figure out an amplifier configuration. If I want to use them in the surround sound, using that as a center, just dewire those, plug them in. But I don't want to have the center on, disable the center, plug them in and use them as a front channel. The point is you got to use, the hardest thing about being specifically an audio reviewer is not just, oh, I have to film a review for 30 minutes, is I have to use these for days or weeks or even a, even a handful of hours. Think about the effort it would take to unpack them, use them for hours, and then give you an opinion on them. I got to use these things. So if I'm going to use them, I might as well sit in a comfy old couch, kick my feet up, and watch some uh, Captain America Witcher Soldier. It's as good a test as any. Anyway, so that's that. So if everyone wanted to know what the permanent speaker setups are in my house, that's basically it. Anything else? Anyone? No? Well, I was good. Um, check out my second channel on the second channel. It used to be the Sound Demo channel. I do some software reviews. I do the review series on there. This would be a video that I would consider putting on that, but I wanted more people to see this video, so they'd stop asking me about where my ohms are. So every other type of video like that and sound demos are on the second channel, which almost has 10,000 subscribers. Thank you for that. Uh, check out the unboxing channel, Zeos. Patreon and subscribe star, because while companies send me all this stuff, this stuff doesn't instantly turn into money that heats and cools my house or feeds the cats in the garage. By the way, there's cats in the garage. We'll get around to them. They're gonna be good indoor, outdoor slash barn cats but they came from the same place Chewbacca came from. So they, they have a place in my heart. Um, so your Patreon subscribe to our series early, participate in yard sales, uh, loss of sound demos. If you want to just listen to the YouTube sound demos, there's loss of sound demos. And then uh, Haifa Guides, the Haifa Guide forums, which are currently being sponsored, I think by Deconi still only, but we're getting more sponsors for that. If you're interested in sponsoring this channel or the forums, or one of my live streams on Twitch, which I do Wednesdays and Sundays, by the way, if you want to watch me walk around with a camera ahead on Wednesdays and Sundays. Um, if you're interested in sponsoring any of those, please let me know. Contact me. And um, yeah, that's it. I hope this enlightened you a little bit. And it's time, I guess I didn't give you really a wallpaper. Well, just join the wallpaper horde, which is a thing that gives you every wallpaper ever. And maybe there'll be one or two special ones in there. That's it. Cool. Cool. I'm Zeos. Cool. <laughs>